Howdy, this is Mackenzie Franklin from Side Game LLC here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Today we're going to be organizing Sheol, designed by Gabriel Poro and published by Lunar Oak Studio. This is a fully sleeved, all-in copy of Sheol that's organized to get gameplay started as soon as possible, as well as facilitate the game while it's being played. If you have any questions about anything you see here, please let me know down in the comments below, and if you're looking for links to anything that we talk about in the video, please look in the description. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please make sure that you do. It is the best way to help us grow. And for those of you already subscribed, thank you so much for the continuous support. Let's get started organizing Sheol. Before we begin, I want to quickly mention the playmat for the game. We use the architect tubes here, and I love the way that you can unscrew the top here and affix art on the top. Just print out a picture of the game and then seal it like so. And they are also adjustable so they'll fit all of your different playmats. I also love it so you have a bunch of these. You can easily tell which art goes to which. And then you just slide out your mat and you're ready to go. So great for shield here. Can't recommend these enough. The last thing that I want to mention has to do with the actual boxes that we use for the storage system. As you can see, we use the core box here, and it is going to have a slight bit of lid lift on the bottom here. That's for all of the rule books and some of the boards. But we're also going to be incorporating a BCW box. BCW boxes are these large white storage boxes that are perfect for storing your standard size cards. They give you a lot of different columns in order to organize things, but if you go onto the inside here, you're also going to be able to remove some of those columns to make room for miniatures, token containers, etc. It'll be super useful for this organization, as you'll see soon. For this one in particular, we use the monster storage box. Once again, I'll leave a link in the description of the video for anything that I talk about here. The original shield had a large box that was intended to be used for storage purposes. However, I found that putting all of your pieces in there was quite a nuisance and really hindered setting up the game and actually getting it played. So we've opted to use just the core box here as well as one BCW box. And we'll talk about all of the uses for it in a second. All that out of the way, let's get started organizing shield. We'll lift off that lid and inside you'll see that we have our rule book on top. To reduce lid lift as much as possible, we'll put the bindings of the mission book as well as the rule book on opposite sides here and we'll move them to the side for now. Our rule book and our mission manual. Underneath the two large booklets, you'll have a save sheet here. This is so that you don't have to write inside of the archives of the reef in that rule book. So you can just print out a new one of these every time. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can find copies of these to print for yourself. Underneath the save sheet, we have our shadow boards, our servo droids board, as well as our citadel board. Go ahead and put those to the side for now. Underneath all of the flat components, you're going to have your main resource bin. You'll simply lift the plastic lid off of here and place it in a central area. This will be your main pool of items and accessories and things that you'll be collecting throughout your games. Starting on the right side here, we have some miniatures in the game that are going to be replacing your standees for your player characters. You'll use these rubber bases and affix them to the character that you're going to actually play as. That way you can easily identify who is who. We'll go ahead and return that miniature back into its proper place for now. In the bottom right corner, you'll have a variety of tokens, but generally they're going to be used as your activating tokens. So you're going to have the tokens that are specific to the character that you are playing. So it depends on your player count. You may have more of these in here. But we currently have the game set up for a solo game, which means that we also have all of your servo droid activator tokens in there as well. So you'll have the bases for any characters you're using, the tokens for any characters you're using, and then tokens for any servo droids you're using. That'll all be in that right corner here. You'll also have a silica gel packet for freshness in there, and then these black indicator tokens as well for general purposes. Those will all be in that bottom right corner. To the left of these tokens, we have some of our land tiles. In particular, you can see which ones are which based on their starting letters. So we have our S here and our T. So you're going to put those in alphabetical order, T, A, B, C, D, so on and so forth. And then you'll also have your coral bone tokens is here just to be served as general nuisances, different obstacles for the players as they're extending their map. So those will all go in that section here. Above that section, you'll have any unlocked facility tiles based on where you are in your campaign, and then lots of various colored cubes. These are going to be used for a variety of things like tracking your lux, the enemies, all sorts of different features. So all your different cubes will be in here. Above your cubes, you'll have all of your dice in the game. There is room in this container to store an additional set of dice, and that's what we've done here. And then above that, you'll have all of your tokens. These are going to be your remaining character tokens, as well as tokens that you'll earn that you can spend on upgrades throughout the course of your campaign. It's going to be all in that section here. 
As mentioned before, this is set up for a solo game. So in this top section here, we'll have all of your servo droids with the rubber bases attached. That way they're ready to go and you don't have to dig them out every time that you set up the game. So it really does facilitate that ease of gameplay. So if you're playing a solo mode or games with less than four players, it'll be nice to put those servo droids with their appropriate bases for easy access here on top of your Umbra tokens. These are the general resource in the game that you're gonna be used for building, etc. And then your fives and your ones will all go in this token tray here. So that's the servo droids and the Umbra tokens. Going back down to the bottom here, we have our two tile terrain tiles, and they'll be separated based on their type in this bottom section, and then another set of these land tiles. Once again, organized by their type, and then alphabetically, A, B, C, D, E, so on and so forth. And then lastly, in this section, you'll have all of your singularity tokens. These are going to be marked based on their shape. So they've got one side that's light, and one side that is this darker red. So this will all be in that bottom left section here. Above that section, you'll have your shadow bag here. Currently, it is empty, We'll fill it later during the setup of the game, but then underneath that you'll have all of your shadow boards. These represent the different minions that you'll be fighting essentially that you're going to be pulling from that shadow bag. Let's return our shadow components back to the box here and move to our last section here, which has our light stream bag. This is going to have all of your light stream tiles that you're going to be building that board with, making connections and generally being able to navigate the board around. So you'll put everything into that bag for storage purposes. And the last set of components in this tray are the shadow tokens. Now each of the shadow tokens features art, which represents a different type of shadow in the game, and you're going to store them with their appropriate shadow here. Now based on the mission that you're playing, you will include or exclude these tokens based on what it demands, but they'll all be here so you can easily identify which one goes where, and then you'll also be able to just drop them in the shadow bag here for setup. So very easy to find what you actually need for each mission, and then put them straight into that bag and you're ready to go. As you may have noticed, our shadow tokens are inside of coin capsules here. We put them in here not only to increase that satisfaction feeling when you're pulling them out of the bag, but also to keep them protected. If you keep these tokens protected, you're never going to really be able to tell what you're pulling from the bag, so each time it will really be a surprise. You'll have no idea what's coming up. So I really like these coin capsules, and they work perfectly for shield. Another great feature of these coin capsules is that you can trim down the sides of the container that they arrive in, here and here, so that they fit perfectly into that upper left section here. This is going to make it so you have these nice columns to store all of your different shadow tokens. Works really well for the purposes here. And one last thing to mention when using coin capsules here, I do recommend that you get an X-Acto knife for them, as some of the sides will have a little bit of plastic that's sticking off, and I always recommend that you use an X-Acto knife to trim them down. Just make sure they're nice and smooth on the sides. That way, once again, you're not able to tell which tokens that you're drawing, and your coin capsules will last you a long time. So I do recommend that you make sure to trim them down a little bit. Not only are you trimming down the sides of your organizer here so that it fits, but also trim each coin capsule itself. It may take a little bit of time, but I think it will be very much worth it. So we'll return our light stream bag here as well as our shadow bag, and that's everything inside of our token organizer here. Once again, this is going to be used pretty much every single game. You pull off that lid and then put this in an easily accessible area in your table. So you make sure that everybody has access to the resources and components inside. Underneath the token container, you're going to have the miniatures for the game. The insert for the miniatures here has been pretty much untouched, keeping all of our shadows in their rows, as well as retaining all of our pieces to the Citadel and your large boss miniatures. The only thing that we've actually removed here are the servo droids, and we saw those in the tray prior. So we're gonna have those three missing spots for the servo droids. But this is pretty much taken straight from that miniatures expansion box. Now, the big reason that we've removed that box from our storage organization system in general is because it's frankly super annoying to have to open it, take it out, find the miniature every single time. In this case, all you have to do is remove that token tray and then every miniature here is easily accessible. You can even go one step further here and remove that plastic tray from here just so you don't have to take it on and off every time. So it's totally up to you, but honestly, <laughs> and doing this right now in the video, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this plastic tray. We're not gonna need it for the cleanup. So that's everything inside of our core box. Let's go ahead and pack it up. We'll return the token tray on top of all the miniatures. We'll put all three of our boards as well as our save sheet in there, followed by our mission manual and our rule book with the bindings on separate sides here. And that's everything inside of the core box for Sheol. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside that BCW box. As I'm sure you've already guessed, our BCW box contains pretty much all of the cards in the game, as well as some of the larger miniatures and tokens. Now is a good time to talk about the sleeves that we use for the game. There are three different sizes of sleeve, and for the standard size, we actually use two different types. So we'll go ahead and detail those now. 
For our large cards, generally the land and character cards, we use the Ultimate Guard Premium Soft Sleeves, 81 by 122 millimeters. These are generally sized for something like Dixit, but I'll make sure to leave links in the description below for all of the sleeves that we talk about here. For our small mini European board game sleeves, we use the Game Plus products here, the mini European board game size. The last size of sleeve that we use here is the Ultra Pro Pro Mat standard size deck protector sleeves. These are going to be for the majority of the remaining cards, all of your standard size cards. Now you can definitely just use the clear cards if you want to make sure you're retaining all of the artwork for all of your cards, and I do recommend that. These are my favorite clear sleeves. I love the matte finish and I love the way they shuffle. However, I also really enjoy the standard white back sleeves here. I love the way that they shuffle as well, and they've got a great feel to them overall. I've used these a lot when I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and that feeling has carried over to board gaming as well. So I use these whenever I don't really care about the back of an artwork of a card, and the character cards here just have a big shield on the back, and so I don't think it's necessarily something that you really care that much about, and I think that the white color scheme does work well with the whole shield theme as well. So I really like these Ultra Pro sleeves, but definitely if you want to keep all that art, I definitely recommend just using that clear sleeve here. And just to clarify, all the cards with this white shield on the back, that's what I'm using the white sleeves for. It also makes it so you can easily identify which cards are those player cards, essentially. Let's start off with the bottom section here. We have all of our standard cards here, and they're going to be organized first off with all of your upgradable cards. So these standard cards here, if you can see on the bottom, this is going to show the tier at which you can actually level up into them, as well as the type or the class that they're from. So you'll have all of your player cards here from the different types, and you also have all of your item cards, etc., your different abilities that you can purchase, all organized by that type as well as that tier. So you'll separate those by type and tier, so that way you can easily identify which card you actually can purchase and spec into. So this will all be in that first section here. After those upgrade cards, we have our status cards. These are going to be cards that will get shuffled into your deck and be positive or negative conditions for you. This also includes the cards from the different expansions. Next up, we have all of our mission cards. These are going to be denoted by the backs here. For example, mission two, mission three, so on and so forth. You're just going to keep all of the mission cards together, going from A, B, C, D, so on and so forth, depending on the mission. So we'll move all of the mission cards to the side for right now. After all of the mission cards, you'll have all of your starting character cards. Now, these are going to be specific based on this symbol in this bottom right section here. Not only will they have their light shield cards, but they'll also have some specific cards here that are their items and their weapons. So their lantern as well as their weapon. So each of the different characters will have their own different symbology here showing which characters is which. So on those items, it's going to be in that upper right corner. And then on the light shield cards, it's going to be here down at the bottom there. So that's for each of the different characters. Just go ahead and organize them all together in one big clump. Next up, you'll have your Threat, Reaction, and Reborn cards. You're going to use these based on the mission that you're currently playing. A lot of these cards will tell you specifically when to use them. So go ahead and put those to the side for now. And lastly, you'll have your Outer Lord Action and Outer Lord Reaction cards, separated by the different symbols on the back here, and then you'll have all those reaction cards down at the bottom. If you want to take a step further in your organization system, you can definitely use index cards and write the names of the specific classes here, so that way you can easily find them in these large stacks. You can also write something like the mission number, the different outer lord that you're facing, for quick reference. For me, myself, I am not well versed enough to figure out what the different characters are called, so this is not really something that I have planned on doing. But if you've played a lot of S.H.I.E.L.D., this might be helpful. Trim down some index cards, write the names of the different characters or the bosses, and then slot them in here into their appropriate space in the row. Let's put this bottom row back, starting with our Outer Lord Reaction and Action cards, our Threat Reaction and Reborn cards, all of your different character cards, all of your mission cards, your status cards, and your upgradable advanced cards. Moving to the next row, you'll have all of your Lux boards for the characters. Give one of those to each player. To the right of the boards, you have a small box that's going to hold all of your not yet in play or unlocked Citadel and or printer cards. You can definitely just use a small plastic bag for this, but I thought that this definitely fit really nicely in that right section here. You'll then have your expansion miniatures here. We have our Sentinels as well as the Merciful in the middle here. And underneath that, we have another row of miniatures, the Maul, as well as all of the Swarmers. And to make them fit into this row here, you're just simply going to trim the bottom here. I recommend a pair of scissors or the X-Acto knife that we talked about earlier. Let's return our miniatures back to that row, followed by our not yet unlocked cards and our Lux boards. 
In this top section here, you'll see that we've actually removed the divider from this section of the BCW box in order to fit our large miniature as well as some tokens and some other things that we'll talk about here in a second. On the left side here, we have our Tsimita miniature. We actually have a foam block in here as well just to help it so it doesn't shuffle around. It stays nice and snug, but this is trimmed down as you can see on the edges here so that it fits nicely in that upper left corner. And this is going to fit flush with the top of your box, so you should have no issues with closing your box, but also keeping everything protected as well. Moving to the right side, we have a small hardware storage case here. You can get these for $1 from the Dollar Tree. Once again, I'll leave a link in the description below for everything I talk about here. You just lift that lid open, and then you have access to all of your different tokens. They're rounded on the bottoms here, so you can easily take them out, and they fit perfectly for this game as well, particularly into that space in the BCW box. For this hardware storage case in particular, let's lift off the lid here, and you'll see that we have all of our facility tiles here, your abilities for those facility tiles, your event tiles, and then your Lux Vial number token tokens, as well as your shadow number tokens in there as well. And as you can see, they're grouped into ones and twos, threes and fours, fives and six, and then underneath your facility tiles, if you need them, you got your sevens and eights as well. I really like the way that you just open this up and everything is ready to go at your disposal there. Underneath the storage case, you're going to have all of your Herald and your Outer Lord boards. So these are going to be all here, those giant bosses you'll be fighting during the game. Underneath those boards, you'll have your Engineer's Cast Expansion Miniatures. Once again, trimmed down on the sides here, so that way they're still nice and snug, but they're not going to be taking up a ridiculous amount of space. To the left of those miniatures, you'll have all of your standees in the game. You can definitely remove them, but we've decided we have some extra room, so why not keep them with the rest of your components? So they'll just be in a plastic bag here, tucked into that corner there. In this upper right section here, you'll have all of your large Dixit-sized cards. These are going to be your location cards, as well as your event cards for the game. I won't get into any details on those, no spoilers here. But then you'll also have your reference cards for the game. So this is going to give you some action overviews and what happens during the different phases. They are double-sided, so definitely use these. And then you'll have your different character cards for the game as well, followed by the events and objectives, activities, etc. that you've already completed. So put those on the bottom so that they're separate from your active events there. Next up, we've got a small plastic bin that we've repurposed from another game. You can definitely just use a plastic bag for this, but this is going to contain all of our every game components. So once again, just use a plastic bag for this, but these are going to be the cards you're always using. So your current deck of these red cards here, your current Citadel status, your specific characters and the items that they currently have equipped, their decks that they're going to be using, any reference cards or items, anything that you need for every single gameplay session, and then your event deck, as well as any printer cards that you have access to currently. So all of that will be in just one pack here. And when you wrap up each game, you'll just put that back in that envelope, or in this case, this repurposed plastic container. You just put those in their appropriate spots on the board. And if you're playing with multiple players, there will be more cards in here, primarily those light shield cards for the different players, and then any items that they're using as well. And our last component in here, if you're not feeling like using the 3D miniatures or having trouble with assembling them, we've got our standee citadel. Just put those pieces together like so and place it in the center of the board. Works just fine. It's in there if we want it or need it, or if we're not feeling like setting up the 3D miniature. So that's everything inside of our BCW box here. Let's go ahead and pack it up, starting off with all of our every game components in that middle section. Our large Dixit size cards next. Our engineers cast miniatures, as well as our extra standees all of our Herald boards, and lastly, our token organizer. And that's everything inside of our BCW box. And that is organizing Sheol. If you have any questions about what you saw here, please let me know down in the comments below. And once again, links to everything that I talked about here in the description of the video. How do you organize your copy of Sheol? What do you think of the game so far? What's your favorite upgrade path to go through? What's your favorite hero? Who's been the toughest enemy to face? For organization purposes, are the coin capsules a bit too much? Or do you love them as much as we do? We'd love to hear what you think. But thank you so much for watching Side Game Strong.